Hi, this is Mark Hibben for Technomicon Media with a video update on the ASUS Transformer Prime TF201. At the end of my last update, I was waiting expectantly for the GPS dongle fix to arrive from ASUS. And lo and behold, one day it turned up. Here it is right here. There was no warning, no email notification. The FedEx guy just dropped it off. So let's take a look at it and see how well it performs. Now, when I open the package, of course, I, I can tell that the, that the dongle has a plastic case. And some people have actually criticized that because they feel it doesn't look as good as the Transformer Prime. But, the, of course, the dongle couldn't be made out of any, any metal that would just be repeating the mistake they made on the Transformer Prime. Another thing you notice is that the label looks like it's just a decal that they slapped on there. So I, I have a feeling this came from some third party and then ASUS just rebranded it with their, with their label. Another thing you notice uh, is that although the keyboard has metal tabs for the mechanical attachment, this actually has molded plastic tabs, so that probably isn't as sturdy. They might actually wear out over time or, or even break off. But let's see how quickly we can actually swap out the keyboard for the dongle. Go ahead and remove the keyboard. Keyboard removal is always very easy. There it is. Now attaching the dongle, that's not so easy. Uh, I'll do the best I can here. Notice that, that this is, has a profile that matches the edge of the tablet. So that actually provides a keying mechanism so, to make sure that you can't accidentally attach this the wrong way. So here it is. It, it, it pushes in to the slots like that. And um, there's no there's no reassuring click that that I would normally get from the keyboard, and the 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 locking button doesn't actually snap into place. You, uh, I I guess I have to actually just close it there. Okay, so now it's locked on, and there it is. So let's let's see how quickly we can actually get a fix now in Google Maps. And there's my locale. I'll go ahead and, and nudge it a little by pressing the, the GPS button. And it says it's waiting for a location. And now it's telling me my current location is temporarily unavailable. Well, okay. Um, I know I'm here somewhere, and I, and I expect that eventually uh, it will it will show my location. It just may take a little while for it to warm up, or whatever it does. Yeah, it's not unusual for GPSs when they're when they're first turned on to to take a, a few minutes to actually get a fix because the the satellite signals can sometimes be a little weak, and and especially on portable GPS systems. The GPS antennas aren't very large, so they don't have a lot of antenna gain. But there my, my position did appear. So let's go ahead and keep zooming in on that. And it's wandering around a little bit around my house. I'm actually, of course, inside the house, but it's showing me located outside of the house. But it's not too far off. But I'm still still being shown outside of the house rather than inside the house. Typically, uh, with, with the iPad GPS, it'll, it'll show me even in the correct room of the house. So it, it showed, it's, it's not converging very ra <coughs> rapidly to the actual correct location. I, I think that may be a problem. Now, if I lay it flat, that may actually help it. <coughs> it <coughs> there is some, some interaction between the antenna and the body 
For instance, if I actually put my fingers around the, the antenna, notice it, it actually caused a, an enlargement of the uncertainty circle, the error circle on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the map. On the other hand, it's actually a little bit more accurate in the sense that it's sort of moving into the house now. And then if I let go of that, that's, that's actually going to cause a change. So that's another thing to keep in mind that uh, how you hold the tablet may actually influence the accuracy of the actual GPS lock. And that looks like that's about as, as good as it's going to get. No, it's actually sort of easing in there still. Okay, it's, it's in the house. Okay, so, so we actually got to the point where it, it's about as accurate as you can reasonably expect a small GPS like this to be. You know, it's within a, within a few meters. But it took a long time to get there, and that's, that's the basic problem is that you're, you're waiting for the GPS to start up from scratch, whereas if you're looking at your location in a GPS-enabled smartphone or other GPS-enabled device, since the GPS is running continuously in the background, you don't have to wait for it to start up. It just gives you the location right away. So do I think the GPS dongle is really an acceptable substitute for a working internal GPS? No, I really don't. Uh, but I think how satisfied you might be with it really depends an awful lot on your usage scenario. For instance, one of the scenarios I've seen demonstrated in videos involves using GPS mapping in, a, in an automobile. Well, in a car, you're not likely to need or, or use the keyboard, and you're probably going to use this mapping feature over an extended period of time. So how long it takes for the GPS to start up and initialize, you, know, you probably don't care about that. But I think most consumers have gotten used to GPS-enabled smartphones and GPS-enabled devices that allow you to very quickly dip into some location-based app or service and then go about your business. And in that scenario, the, the dongle's a little inconvenient, uh, especially if you already have the keyboard attached. For instance, if you're tapping away in a coffee shop someplace and then suddenly you decide you want to use some location-based app, then in that case you have to detach the keyboard, attach the dongle, and then the really painful part is waiting for it to start up. So do I think consumers should be satisfied with this? No, I don't. I, I think ACUs should take back the Transformer Prime. And if they can't fix it and make it work right, then they should provide an acceptable substitute. Uh, is that what I think they're going to do? No, uh, of course not. Uh, they're going to allow the class action lawsuit to go forward, and eventually they'll uh, settle for some meager, meager payout per consumer. Uh, often these things amount to, you know, something like a, a discount coupon for a, a future ASUS purchase, if you if you want to risk that, or uh, actually a check in the in some very very small amount. It's only the lawyers who really make out on class action lawsuits. If you already own a Transformer Prime, should you hold on to it? That's a really difficult question. Uh, you know, I think it depends on, on how much difficulty you're having with it. It does seem to vary uh, quite a bit. You, you, may, you may actually uh, want to get rid of it. Uh, I originally bought the Transformer Prime to use as an Android development platform, and, and none of the problems that, that I, uh, I've heard about or encountered myself actually preclude uh, doing that. So I think I'll probably hold on to it, and it, it certainly will serve uh, as a development platform. If you're looking to make a purchase uh, of a Transformer Prime, <laughs> then I think you really have to think carefully about that. Uh, if you don't care about the GPS issues, uh, you may be able to find it very, very steeply discounted someplace on eBay, for instance. And in that case, it may actually turn out to be a good value for you. But I think I would caution against that. 
and I would really uh, advocate that you look seriously at, at one of the newer uh, ASUS transformer devices, such as the, the Transformer 300. Now, it doesn't have as good a screen as the Transformer Prime, and it also, unfortunately, comes in some very garish anodized aluminum colors, like, you know, bright anodized blue, kind of a throw kind of a throwback to the Bondi blue of the early IMAX. You know, it's kind of hearkening to a, another era. I'm, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go there myself, but that's, that's my taste. I certainly regard the Transformer Prime as, as much more attractive uh, in terms of its exterior appearance. Anyway, that's the uh, update on the Transformer Prime for now. Uh, this is Mark Hibben. Thanks for watching.